This was scrims. This was Thursday night. Uh, I was playing Zerus into Quang. This is me. We will. I'm gonna. I'm mostly VOD reviewing myself here. It's gonna be like an offlane VOD review, kind of just what to do, what not to do, that kind of thing. Um, this game, I don't even know what happens on the other side of the map. To be honest, I I did not pay attention at all in the game what happened on the other side of the map. Um. But so this matchup, right, going into offlane, um, it going into it going into offlane, right, you have to know what your matchup is against Quang. My poke is solid, but if he ever full commits me, especially like pre level six, he's just gonna win every trade. I don't trade this guy evenly, but I poke pretty well. So like, right, that's that is the game plan coming into this lane, and you'll see I'm just I actually take a kind of a bad trade at the beginning of this. Because I walk up to hit this minion and he gets a right click auto on me. Which like that's not really answerable for me. Like that again you can see how much damage he took from my poke. Which is like 65. And how much damage I took from his right click auto. Which is like 100. Right this, that's not that That's a bad trade. But after I fucked that first one up. I don't think I really let him do that to me again. Okay he just did it to me again. Why am I trading that? That was bad. I, I have, I'm wave disadvantaged. I'm eating. I mean, his minions are chasing me. I'm not really eating minion damage here. But that wasn't a great trade. I do have healing on Zerus, right? Zerus passive does heal me. But before level 6, the healing is super minimal. It's like half a percent of your HP per stack. And I got like 4 stacks off that. I probably just healed for like 25 health. So he gets level 2. I just have to respect it. I back up. Wait for my level 2. There you go. Again, he still beats me right now. It doesn't matter what ability he took, he beats me. If he has tether and, and true damage, he beats me. If he has dash, he still beats me because he has auto cancels with his passive and his cooldowns are better. So I'm just playing around poke. You can see my HP going up. His HP is going down. I have the wave on my side. So right here, this is really bad. Really bad for this Quang. The reason being... Uh, he knows... Or I'm assuming he knows. Well, he actually does know. His Chimera's on this two camp. He knows that my ramp started on red buff, right? He knows my ramp started red buff. And he knows, because my ramp started red buff, that my ramp's on blue buff right now. Or around there. His Chimera is, watch, is on my two camp. So he knows my rampage isn't in red jungle. He's not showing anywhere else. He knows that ramp's on this blue. He's in a really bad spot to have this wave right here. It's just not like it, he uh, he's in a terrible spot and I'm talking to my jungler is Grady, and I'm talking to him right here and he's saying bait this guy. Am I looking at the wrong side of the map? I fucking am aren't I? Oh my, wait okay. One sec let's go back 10 seconds. I'm looking at the wrong side of the map. My jungler's on his blue buff on the enemy blue buff. I'm orange team. So he actually does know where my jungler is. So this actually isn't as bad. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong side of the map. My jungler would be on blue buff. But he verticaled. Kai cleared his whole red side. Again, for me, it doesn't matter. For me, it doesn't matter. Because uh, I'm on my own tower line and Chimera can't gank me. That's all I care about. Again, I don't beat this guy but pre-6. But one after an item, I actually do win. Or I can win this. I have to dodge his uh, knockup. If I dodge the knockup, then I win trades against this guy after six. And that's all I'm playing for. I am on orange side. Sorry, I got messed up. Because I know, and I was thinking because that happens later in this game. I know there's a point in this game where Grady is sitting on blue buff and telling me to fight this guy. And I thought it was earlier. I thought it was this early in the game, but it, it is not. So, Quang just dropped a full wave. That was a really bad back from him. I don't know. I, I don't know. That was an odd base from him. He does have a slow push going into him, which is fine. But he dropped a full wave for it. Which I, I feel like that's bad. Again, I'm just still playing for poke. Right? Like, there's no reason for me not to just sit here and poke this guy. 
I'm trying not to stand in my wave so I don't get weight comboed with my minions. That's the last thing I want. If I'm standing in my minions and he's able to QE right click my minion wave and me at the same time, that's really bad. Oh, this is this is where it happens. Okay, it was at the beginning of the game. I was kind of right. I was just a little bit early. Because this guy, he goes for this green buff here. And the issue with with anyone pulling green buff against Zerus is that Zerus has like the best green buff secure in the game. With his right click, the way that it does execute damage, it's just so free. And so the whole this whole time I'm just telling Grady that this dude's sitting on green buff. My my jungler's on blue right now. Right, and I'm just sitting here, I'm just saying, this dude's pulling this. Like, I don't know what he's doing, he's trolling, but he's pulling this. He actually gets it, which is crazy. But then, my jungler is just saying, fight him. So I fight him. The The fact that I just didn't get that is, is kind of nuts, like, that's a misplay. I sh there's no way that I should ever lose green buff. But, then we get a good gank. He has rock pulled, I'm, my stun is just coming up right now. I'm just getting him to walk into me. There's my stun. Uh, does he get out here? Do I kill? I think he gets out here. I miss. Yeah. I do miss. If I hit that, even with his shield, I think I kill him anyway. But, uh, he's in kind of a bad spot because he is 20%. I mean, I can kill him with a spear. He can't kill me. Just take a base here. This isn't a... This is a... This is a really... What am I... Why am I backing? How much gold do I have in hand? I have 1,100 gold in hand. I don't know why I'm backing here. I guess I'm scared that he can just combo me and kill me. But what happened? Like, on this back, my wave is going to full clear this. His wave's going to die. And he, he could take a freeze here if he wanted it. This is not a good back. I should probably just stick around. Because I get Temporal Ripper, which is sick, but, like, that's it. Okay, Quang clears the wave. He didn't, I, I don't, if he doesn't clear that wave, I could be in a really bad spot. He cleared the wave for me, so it ends up actually, like, that ends up being solid for me. That ends up being a good back, but that's very, like, results-oriented. That should, that should have been a really bad base for me. Because the next wave was a cannon. And if I back on the next wave, it makes it way harder for it to, for him to hold it. But it also just makes it so that, like, if, if he does try to push it, I don't lose anything to tower. So if I just stick around, he was really low, right? I guess I didn't have enough mana to Q right click him, but he was really low with no flash. So I'd probably just stick around there and, and pressure him and last hit minions and then back when, when my cannon wave is coming. Your wave is fucked on the gank. You can just tell me you need help shoving. Uh, I should have Grady. I get, I honestly, what probably happened, just. If this is a video, just to be clear, my jungler is is in my chat right now. And he's he's saying, on that, I should just say, I need help pushing this. And that's what I should have done, right? I should have just been like, okay, Grady, I need you to shove this wave with me. And then we shove the wave, I get my back, wave crashes, I'm good to go, right? Without that, I kind of fucked my wave. Luckily, the Quang did not, like, he didn't, he didn't fuck my wave. He didn't, he didn't uh, capitalize on that, which is fine with me. I mean, it, it works out in my favor, obviously. But uh, I should have just held my jungler and said, Hey, I need, I need you to push this with me. And if he pushes it with me, then we're good to go. And nothing matters. But also, I'm really far ahead of this guy on XP. Because of he, he missed... Remember when he backed at like level 3 and missed an entire wave? He just hit level 5, and I'm almost level 6, right? I'm like 3 creeps off of 6 here, and he has no flash. Once he gets his, once he gets level six, he can Q ult out of my ultimate. But uh, until then, he can't really do anything. They miss every. They they try and gank me. The Chimera being here, he just cleared our three camp. I didn't hear him on it. Uh, as soon as they miss Quang combo, I don't. I honestly, I don't even know why he's jumping on me. If they miss the Quang combo, they can't kill me. It's not gonna happen. It's they're they're never ever killing me here without without Quang knockup. Plus, I'm a level up on Chimera. Has he back? Uh, he should have based, right? What's Chimera sitting on items-wise? He's sitting on Cleaver, which is just like... I mean, it's it's good for, for minion clear, but it doesn't do any damage to me. Right? That's not, that's not really a damage item. He has 20 power. So...
This was a scrim? Yes, this is a scrim. This was my team uh, versus a team called Hive, I think is what they're going by right now. And this is Boinks' team. Uh, they're, this is a sub jungler. Their normal jungler is Nugslet. Uh, my team is Cynic, Tekken, our mid laner is Skype Hamster, and then me, Grady, and myself. So, again, I, I'm just, like, I get my six. I'm six way before this guy. He takes another back here. He took a, he took a couple of weird backs in this game. Where I was just like, and I, I was calming it to my team. I'm like, I, I don't know where this dude went. I actually just don't know where he is. Because it was like back timers where I would just would never have expected him to base. And he was just gone. Again, I'm still just playing around poke. Right? All I care about is trying to right click him as much as I can. I don't have my augmentation yet. So, like, this is kind of a bad trade from me. But I'm basing anyway. So, I don't care a crazy amount. Right? I have 1300 gold in hand. So I'm going to take this base anyway. I think he tried. I think he stops me here. Um, because after, especially after that Q RMB, I'm in like Q RMB ult range, right? He could just kill me. And then, so right here, I have 1300 gold. Uh, after Temporal Ripper, I think I need like 2k for AUG still. So I'm not going to get it on this back. But as soon as he pokes me, he just clears, he starts clearing this wave. And he, this is bad. It, what he needs to do is after, especially if he's going to use his abilities on me, he, what, what the Quang should be doing is staring at me. He knows I want to base. He knows I'm low health. He knows that when his cooldowns come up, he could kill me, right? If he hits a Q, I die. Uh, instead, he pushes this wave, and I don't think he... He can't really tower dive me here. It's really difficult for him to tower dive me. So pushing this wave doesn't is just giving me more creeps, and I just don't back. If he just sits here and stares at me, I have to make the choice between risky sit in XP range, maybe he hits a Q, uh, or basing and I miss and then as soon as my base goes off he fast he push it he clears this and I miss all the I miss like most of these minions right if if that makes sense instead he he sticks around here he tries to he tries to do something I mean he, again even if he hit that I don't think he really kills me under tower like he'd let me regen a lot I I don't know it was maybe still risky for me to stick around but it, it's whatever this, this wave here is a cannon wave, so this back is free. He can't push this into me. He can't make me lose this, right? Not really. So that ended up, again, if he... If he had punished me harder, especially on that first wave that was totally boned off of that gank, where we got his flash, if he punishes me on that wave, then I'm not in a good spot. Same with that wave where I just backed. If he punishes me harder on that and doesn't push it... Also, this is what I mean when I say backing on a cannon wave. He pushed the wave. I don't miss the cannon. I missed the I missed the melees, but I don't miss the cannon or these archers, right? I don't I don't miss a whole lot for that. That's what I mean when I say backing on cannons. But he he hasn't really punished me on any wave states that I've that I've kind of fucked. Maybe maybe against a different solo laner or something like that, right? I get punished a little more and this game is harder for me. I still think I'm fine in this lane. Like, this is not a crazy hard lane for me. Especially, again, we're post six. We're about to have num items number one online. Like, I can just kind of clear, sit here, and poke him. Like, my poke is really good. He kind of has to choose between hitting me in the wave. He hits me. Epic. Right here, he I don't have augmentation yet, and he has defense right crazy yeah he has defense so without my augmentation i don't do damage to this guy uh i don't even know why i'm sticking around i should i have 900 gold in hand that's enough for augmentation right i have crest and augmentation in hand like i should probably just be basing here on a, it's on a cannon wave too i don't know why i'm sticking around here i should have just based as soon as that wave walked into his tower line i should have been gone I don't that that one it that one's not like I don't really lose a whole lot off of it other than tempo, right? Because if I had backed right now, I would be back in lane. I wouldn't really have missed anything, and I'd have crest and augmentation. I back here again. All I really lose off of this is, is a little bit of tempo. I lose about thirty seconds of tempo, right? Yeah, I score and I have full augmentation. 
though. I lose a little bit of tempo from a from a not awesome base, but I think again it, it ends up not being too crazy. I still like I do miss some of these creeps here off of that wave. But at this point in the game, I haven't really had to do anything. I haven't been forced to do anything yet. We catch this Chimera. This dude's level 6 trying to invade. My my jungler is on the way. The mid laners are both tied up. So we know that this is either a 2v2 or both mids are going to be here and this is going to be a 3v3. I'm really strong right now, just by the way. I'm really strong. I have full AUG, Ice Scorn, Talons. I have my ult. I'm two levels up. This Chimera never lives here. And right when I start fighting this guy, I get comms from my team who uh, were, at the, they just see him. Chimera, no flash. Easiest, easiest Xeris ult of my life, right? Kai, no, Kai no flash, Kai no flash. He ults me, doesn't matter. He dies. Quang does some damage, but this dude doesn't, he's completely out of mana. So he can never do, really do anything here. We walk at him a little, but we can never catch him. There's just no way. We pull back, we do mini. Um, this is pretty free. We just killed their jungler. Our mid laner has some, has prio. Like, if you look at both mid laners, right? Bellica, no HP, no mana. Gideon, no HP, no mana. As long as he doesn't eat a Bellica ult here and die, we get this for free. Here, green buff is up. So I just want to push this and try and get green buff. My jungler's here. We're just tr we're trying to kind of brute force this tower. Um, we know Chimera's around. We see him. So we end up taking this 2v2, which is risky, right? We just... What you have to keep in mind is we just killed Kai and got mini prime. So we're sitting on gold, right? I have, I have uh, 800 gold in hand. Grady has 1,700 gold in hand. He doesn't even have a first item finished, right? So we are taking this fight versus a Chimera who he went he went cleaver into broadsword, but still like a uh, uh, Quang with a with an item finished. Chimera has more components, right? We are taking this fight at a little bit of a disadvantage. We have mini, but that's about it. Um, so this is a bit of a risky fight to take, but it ends up working out. I'm just trying to right here. I'm just trying to kite for my rampage. I just stun right. We're just we're just getting away. I scorn talons, rampage jumps out, and then I'm just kind of, it's kind of a switch out moment, right? If you're like a, a sword art online person, switch out. I go in, I'm taking aggro, I get a stun, we walk away, you know? So a little bit overzealous maybe with the mini prime, um, but uh, but it's it's fine. It doesn't really hurt. As, I mean, it could hurt if we die there, but I, I think it's really hard for them to kill us. At this point in the game, we I know that we're on Fangtooth. I'm just walking into mid here to make sure that I can still get some farm and be here for this fight. Right, Quang's really probably not going to get my tower. That's fine. He really he really isn't going to... Like, even if he gets my tier 1 here, we have mini prime rampage in mid and we just got Fangtooth. We're going to get a... We're going to get a tower. Right, he does... He ends up getting my tower. I just, I just kind of don't care. Like, we're going to end up getting a lot of value off of this in this mid lane. Which is exactly what happens. We kill Kai. Um, we still have mini prime on rampage, right? Like we can come get these towers kind of whenever we want. So it's not like that's not crazy. Plus, now I could freeze if I really wanted to. I don't want to. Like in this matchup, there's no reason for me to freeze. Just because of how good my ultimate is against their team. Right? Like we're we're Zerus ult against Bellica. Arbash, like those are such free characters to kill with my ultimate that like there's no reason for me not to just be wanting to run around. So I pretty much just want to clear min. At this point in the game, my goal is clear minions, run around map. Brim's review, yeah, we're doing a little vod review, and this was just like the best game that I that I had to to vod review. Because it's just like I mean, if you think about it, right? We're 15 minutes into this game, and it's three to three, which is is that uh, like. It's three to f oh this guy someone executed, um but it's three to three, and it's just like this is kind of how scrims go a lot of the time they're lower kill games, um but my goal is to just do my job right I know that I don't really one v one the Quang that's not my goal I'm not even really trying, you know like that's it's just one of those things where it's like you there's no reason to do this if I had killed him early or if gotten a jungle gank on him early 
then I could probably fight with him and it'd be a little more even. Um, and that'd be fine. Like here, I, like I'm boxing a little, but I'm not really doing anything. I'm just trying to abuse augmentation procs as all just for bonus damage. Uh, he takes a base. I just hard shoved the wave. I know it's a cannon. He's not going to miss anything, but I do get first move. My team has just been fighting in mid. So I'm just here to kite them out. Quang is here. That's fine. I'm just here to make sure they get out. Poke him a little bit. That's fine. I got that. I got that buff, by the way. Again, I'm just trying to stay farmed. I'm only 120 CS, which is kind of crazy. I just hit 130 off of that camp. Like, I'm actually down 10 CS, which isn't a lot. And it doesn't, does it really matter? I'm, oh, 20 CS. Okay. Does it really matter? Not really. To be completely honest with you. Not really. But should I be even in CS or up? Probably. But I also have two assists and he hasn't done anything. So you have to kind of like take into account what, what the rest of the map is happening as well. All right. So Quang rotates to this first. Quang's already here. My team on the rest of the map is pretty strong, right? My mid laner is three and one. My jungler is two and one. My map is pretty strong. So I don't mind being here second. I'm also playing Zerus, a really good cleanup character, right? Zerus, not only he wants to cage someone who doesn't have flash. So later in a fight, someone probably flashed already. And he has execute damage on his spear. You want to be hitting low health targets. Really good cleanup character. So I'm just calling, like, I'm on my way. We, I'm, I'm saying fight. I'm just saying fight, 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 fight. Like that, that is all I care about. I flash. I'm, I'm ulting Quang. I know he flashed already, right? I'm just getting the cage. I caged the Narbash as well, force his flash. That's a really easy two, two for one. Get a kill, etc. right? Get a Fang Tooth for free off of this. Get a power stack. I think I have, like... Uh, what do I have? I have a 4 and a 7, so I have 11 power off of my ultimate right now. Not too shabby, actually. Zerus stacks really are kind of meaningless until rank 3, when you get 10 power per stack. They're kind of meaningless. Like, 4 power, really, like, who fucking cares? But 10 power, that's a lot. 7 power is honestly not bad, depending on how many ults you're getting off between the levels of 11 and 16. This is also the build, by the way. I'm not, I, I haven't really talked about builds. Uh, into Chimera Narbash, I'm 100% going Tainted Blade. And Augmentation is so good as a first item on Zerus that I, I'm just building both. I think it's fine. Like, I don't, I don't really need defense here. Like, having a bunch of HP is going to be pretty much just as good for me. I'm building Citadel third. Just because I want to be playing Dive, and Citadel's really good here. Here, I'm just trying to come in late to clean something up. I think I ult Kira. Yeah, and that's an easy kill. She she cleanses, doesn't get doesn't get anything right, dies anyway. Um, if she has flash there, like that's one of those ults. Like this is something just playing Zerus. Even if she has flash, that ult is worth it. My ult right now is on. I have right now I have 15, 35, 45 ability haste. My ult is on a. 70 second cooldown that flash five or a 300 second cooldown for a 70 second cooldown please all day long right even if she has flash i'm going in there regardless i do not care here we just all insta reset we're looking to pull prime we have a pick their carry's not here um they're gonna try and come in and contest this but we are so strong right now that this is kind of just them dying, right? My Decker. Dude, look at this cage, man. Did you guys see this cage? This is such a good cage. This is Tekken Kid playing Decker. Just, just watch this cage that he gets on the corner here. Chimera walks in, and he just walks a little bit too far. And he cages him. I don't even know if this was on purpose. But he cages the Chimera out into us, right? Now, this is basically... Decker is 1v2ing. And this Chimera is 1v3-ing. Like, he, I mean, he is bone. And he's a level down. He's level 10. He just gets CC'd into Oblivion, insta-dead. 
Uh, Decker is just doing what she can over here. I'm just trying to keep their team out. I'm playing. I'm playing just to keep anyone coming in out. Triple kill. That was the easiest triple kill of my life, by the way. I didn't do anything. That's why it was so easy. I just right clicked a couple people. It was on purpose. Are you sure, Tekken? Because it was hot if it was on purpose. Don't get me wrong. Even if it wasn't on purpose, it was still hot. I don't care. I mean, that was a, just a good cage. I mean, it can, you know, it, Bell, Narbash can't walk in. Chimera can't walk out, right? Like, that was just a really good cage. Yeah, we get Prime for free. Time to base. I have 1,500 gold in hand. I don't really need to stick around for any reason. Full Citadel. Go did support play. I mean, Tekken, Tekken's pretty cracked on support, man. I mean, he's, he's just got a big brain. I need him to say 10% more words in a game, but he's like, he just is, is a very smart player. Just, I, and I, maybe it's just a map awareness thing. Like, I feel like he always is doing what he needs to be doing. This was another really weird moment from this Quang, in my opinion. If you look at the rest of the map, right, Gideon is pushing right, or, or uh, I, my right lane, right? Gideon, Gideon's pushing right lane. Uh, they don't know where our rampage is. He's coming into right lane. My duo lane is on the mid inhib. And Quang is defending a tier one in solo lane. I just don't, like, this is one of those where it's just like, let, let it go. I really don't understand his decision to defend this. Because I, ki I kill him. I, did, I don't know what he's doing. His tower was already very low. I kill the tower. I jump his ult. And I just like, I mean, I just don't know what his plan was. Like this, it's the point in the game. And maybe he was just trying to take a last stand. Maybe he's tilted. Maybe, he, you know, there could be a, a, a many things on why he's defending a tier one tower at 23 minutes against prime team, you know? Um, but to defend, like just drop the tower, man. Like, you maybe soft defend one wave, but as soon as my team has this much pressure on the map where we're taking this 4v4 in mid, he's not going to win this 1v1 against me with Prime. His only option is to go to mid and try and take a 5v4. It's the only option that he has. And my team kind of balls out in mid. They get a bunch of kills here somehow. Ramp ends up... Oh, that was Grady. Grady dove too deep. He thought we were, He thought we were just in, and we were not quite in. Then Gideon goes in. Gideon makes a huge play here. I'm just going to go back a little bit. Let's, let's ride with Skype. Skype gets this right in him, and he's just... Look how much pressure he has, bro. He has three people, four people staring at him right here while we're pushing this this into, into mid, right? Like, he just has so much... The amount of eyes that he's pulling onto him is just really good and by the and he's also um he is orb gideon he's orb tainted scepter true silver bracelet with uh with with soul bearer he is hard to kill this is a gideon he's probably got 3000 hp right now he's got a shield when he ults he's got another shield whenever he wants right this is a hard to kill gideon so when he's pulling that many eyes it just works really well for us they end up getting mid eventually I'm just trying to wait. I'm just playing the waiting game. I didn't realize how in we were. Like, look, like, like my team is is fucking gaming, bro. I did. I didn't realize we were in. We don't even have a tank here, by the way. Like our our junk, our rampage is dead. This guy's coming out of base right now, and these guys they're just in. I love it. Like they got the mid in him. They're in on these. Like right, they don't, Narbash has no mana. They don't have anything to, to interrupt Gideon ultimate. He's just he's just. I mean that's a that's a triple kill. That's easy. Flash forward. Oh my god. I didn't realize Skype was going that ham in this game. I think Skype ends at like 10 and 0 or 10 and 1 or something. Kai goes in. He gets our carry. I mean, at this point, anything that they're killing doesn't really matter because one of us being alive with Prime is just going to end the game. But. Grab the Kai. You back up a little bit here. It doesn't... I mean, again, we Quang follows through that portal and just insta-dies, so it doesn't really matter. That's game over. 
But yeah, I mean, it just like, like my ending slash line based on the first like 10 minutes, you would never realize that like I would have this kind of impact on this game, right? And it's just like offlane is so, it's so matchup dependent. Like if you are not in a hard winning matchup, like this is the best thing, like the best advice for offlane. If you are not in a hard winning matchup, you don't need to play for your lane like at all. It just doesn't matter, right? I uh, like rotations to fang rotations to mid are just so much more impactful like if you're playing something like uh i don't know zaris into steel are you ever solo killing that guy not unless he really fucks up no right is the answer no you're not solo killing a steel as zaris so what is it more impactful you for you to sit here and burn cooldowns and mana and hp on him maybe burn your ultimate right even if you get his flash like, is that more impactful, or is it, like, a rotation to Fangtooth? Well, like, what's he going to do? Is Steel going to rotate? Do you, are you stronger than him? In a team fight, you might be, right? If you hit a really big cage, you get an execute, you know, that kind of thing. You can, be, you can have a lot of impact in that fight. If he doesn't rotate, he maybe gets your tier 1. Is that worth it? You have to make sure it's worth it, right? You're going to get, uh, what is it? You get 100 gold from Fangtooth and some XP from it as well. So, as far as that goes... The actual value of a Fangtooth is like two waves of minions or something like that. Or like a wave and a half of minions is like the, the actual monetary value of, of Fangtooth. So it's stuff like that. You rotate though. I always struggle to find a time, to, time frame to roam. You want to rotate when you have pressure in your lane. Your wave is, is walking in further up the lane than theirs is. Like the one, like the primary thing you need before you rotate, but it's also like, did they just reset, right? If is is Fangtooth spawning, did they just reset? If your enemy solo laner just reset and Fangtooth is spawning, they're probably rotating. They're probably gonna go to it out of base. Uh, if that's the case, you have two options: push wave and split push. Get his tier one. You can push the wave and walk to mid and see right if he shows in back in solo lane you just take mid wave if you need if your team needs help on that fang you can go help them because now you're in mid lane or you can base and just run to fang depending on how much gold you have right those are kind of your options um it's one of those things where you kind of have to be in the moment like it depends like in this game i would rather rotate and i did that on like second fang tooth right i, I just walked to mid I didn't have anything else to do, right? I pushed my wave. I'm just going to walk to mid lane. Might as well. We got it. We ended up getting a kill. We got the fang, right? I mean, it, the worst that happens on a rotation like that is I miss three creeps, right? Like I clear my wave. I walk to mid. I clear mid wave. Boom. There's, a, there's the wave that I would have lost in solo lane. He gets my tower. Bummer. Bummer. But... If I get more value on the other side of the map, then that's fine. If I get if I get a fang tooth, that's half of a tower, like effectively as far as as far as swing goes. Like it, it his his lead doesn't grow an immense amount. If 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 we're getting fang, if I get a kill, then his, his him getting that tower doesn't really matter. The like Grux is poking the fuck out of you. Got pressure. What do you do when he leaves and roams? Push the wave. You just have to shove. As soon as Grux shows anywhere that's not solo lane, so either you have wards somewhere like farther away from solo lane, as uh, he shows in mid lane on the mid lane wave, shove. You have to shove the wave. It can be dangerous to shove the wave before he shows because if you shove the wave and he, sh and he didn't leave, then he gets a freeze and now you're fucked, right? So it can be dangerous, but as soon as he shows, you walk in, you shove the wave, if he is full committing to that, depending on what character you're playing, you can full commit to the tower, to the split push. You can full commit to uh, rotating and following him. If you're playing like a Fang Mao, right, that kind of late rotation can be really good because you're really good at cleaning up fights. If you're playing like a Shinbi, it's probably more worth it to just push the tower. You know, I mean, a lot of it's matchup dependent. But uh, yeah, that was our, that was a game from Scrims this week that I just wanted to on